What if I told you Franz Wagner is actually having a really good year? Yes, the shooting is bad, but everything else is career best. Franz Wagner's um actually season plus does Joel Embiid's return really matter? We'll get to that on today's episode of Locked On Magic. You are Locked On Magic, your daily Orlando Magic podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. You are indeed Locked On Magic. Today is April 3rd, 2024. My name is Philip Ross. I'm the expert and site editor over at OrlandoMagicDaily.com. You can, of course, follow me on Twitter at R underscore OMD. On today's episode of Locked On Magic, my Franz Wagner is actually doing pretty well this season. We'll talk about the area that he's struggling, but how everything else is a career best for Franz Wagner. We'll talk about that. Plus... Joel Embiid's return to the Philadelphia 76ers. Does that matter for the playoff race? We'll break down some big results from Tuesday's games. We're going to get to that coming up here in just a moment. But first, we want to thank you again for making Locked On Magic part of your day every day, no matter when you listen to us, whether it's first of your morning, whether it's right when we upload. We truly appreciate you making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. Remember, there's a great Locked On podcast covering every single team in the NBA. Just search for Locked On and the team you're looking for, the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. So when you look at Franz Wagner's stats for the season. You know, you see a couple things. First, he's averaging 19.6 points per game, and that is down over the last couple couple of weeks. Um, you know, he was up over 20 for most of the season. No doubt about it. Had a bad March, 15 and a half points per game, 2.8 assists per game, shot 46.6%, 14.3% from three. Wasn't his best month. We're not going to sit here and deny it. We're not going to sit here and deny the areas that he is struggling. You know, yes, he's averaging a career best 19.6 points per game, career best 5.3 rebounds per game, career best 3.8 assists per game. But he's shooting only 48% from the floor and that icy 28.3% from three. When you talk to people, when you talk among Magic fans, everyone rightfully obsesses over the three point shooting. That is the thing he was supposed to give this team. That was the thing that he had over everybody else on the roster. He is one of the reliable shooters. And to have him take this much of a step back as a three-point shooter has undoubtedly hurt the team. We're going to get to the playoffs. We're going to have a game where Franz Wagner misses threes that he needs to make. And we're going to be frustrated and upset by it. And we should be. I'm not here to excuse the bad three-point shooting because that's the biggest thing holding him back. That's the biggest thing clouding all judgments about Franz Wagner's season. And we're going to recycle a lot of what we're going to talk about today when we get to that point um, at the end of the season. But I feel like it needs to be said. I feel like we need to get this out into the open. Franz Wagner is actually having a really nice year, kids. He's actually playing very, very, very well because outside of the three-point shooting, and again, I grant that is a humongous thing. Outside of the three-point shooting, Franz Wagner has had career highs across the board. Like, literally, across the board. Career-high 19.6 points per game. Career-high 5.3 rebounds per game. Career-high 3.8 assists per game. Um, We wanted Franz Wagner to be more aggressive, to seek his own shot more. He's averaging a career-high 15.2 field goal attempts per game. That's not where it stops. He's averaging a career-high 11.7 drives per game that trails only Paolo Bancaro on the team. He's shooting a career-best 53.1% on those drives, according to data from Second Spectrum. According to our friends at Basketball Index, he's got 13.3 drives per 75 possessions. He's in the 89th percentile with 6.7 total shots at the rim per 75 possessions. Basketball Index gives him a rim shot creation rating of plus 1.4, placing him in the 95th percentile. On top of this, let's just go to field goal percentages now. Wagner is shooting 65.2% on shots within five feet of the basket, with 48.1%, nearly half of his shots, coming right at the basket in that area. Last year, for reference, he shot 63.2% of his shots within five feet of the basket and took 42.8% of his shots from that area. Once again, this is a career for Franz Wagner. He is getting to the basket at an elite level. He is finishing at the basket at a near elite level. And it's... The ones, it's the skill that we know that he has, and it's the skill 
that he has expanded this year. I'm not going to sit here and pretend that three-point shooting isn't important, that three-point shooting doesn't matter. It absolutely matters, and it is a big thing that the Magic are losing out on, not having Franz Wagner making threes consistently. It's going to be a major factor in the playoffs, and you know whether Franz is a high-level player, and look, he's going to get a max this summer. I think we're all expecting him to get the max extension this summer. Whether he gets that max extension and becomes worth it or not worth it is going to come down to whether the three-point shot rebounds because let's be real. No one saw this kind of a season coming. You know, maybe he drops from what he was at 38, 39% last year down to 35, but to drop to sub 30, to be struggling to make threes every game, you know, he takes six threes a game. He's got to make at least two or three of them every night to make, make that worth it. Um, to not even do that, to, you know, he, he hasn't, he's made, he, he hasn't made consecutive three point. He hasn't made uh, multiple three pointers in a single game uh, in quite some time. And look, he's taking 4.6 per game, a little bit more than he did last year, another career high. Um, he's shooting 30% on above the break threes, which account for 86.8% of his total three-pointers. Um, he's making only 29.5% of his catch-and-shoot threes, according to data from Second Spectrum. He was at 40.6% on those last year, same number of attempts. He was at 37.7% as a rookie. To make this much of a regression is a problem. And so I'm not going to sit here and say that you know all, all is sunshine and roses for for Franz Wagner, no doubt about it. He has to make threes for this team to be successful. He has to make threes for this team to get where they want to go. But to say that he's having a horrendous season or an awful season is only looking at part of the picture. This is a Magic team that wants to put pressure on the room. We're going to talk a little bit more about that coming up here in a minute. This is a Magic team that's core offensive philosophy is about that pressure on the rim, about getting downhill, about, about, you know, really making the defense react. That's who and what this Magic team is about. But to get there, they got to have guys that get there. Um, and, and from that as well as anyway, certainly more efficient than Paolo at it. Um, he's getting to the foul line more again. Essentially, when you look at the numbers, Franz Wagner is having a career season everywhere but his three-point shooting. If he were just league average at three-point shooting, if he was at 33% or 35%, the whole narrative on Franz Wagner changes for this season. And so I think it's worth pointing out because, you know, look, Franz had a rough go in March. No doubt about it. The numbers do not lie on that front. He was not good in March, but he is still one of the most important players on this team. He is still a player who is a driving force, is a player that they know they can get the ball to and is going to make a good decision heading downhill. A player that they need to continue to have confidence to shoot and make threes. I think it's really important, again, to note that Franz Wagner has done some really good things this year. I think it's really important to note that Franz isn't just defined by his three-point shooting. Unfortunately, as we get closer to the playoffs, as the playoffs become a bigger thing and as the Magic try to win in the postseason, that three-point shooting is going to matter. And it's it's the one thing that just seems intractable. The Magic cannot find a way to get Franz back to the levels that he knows he's capable of playing at. And that's, you know, it's too late in the season now to expect a dramatic statistical change. He may go through a hot streak here and there, but he's not going to shoot 35% for three this year. And, you know, getting to 30% would be a, a tough thing, um, would be would be a struggle. But the Magic got to get something out of that in the playoffs because everything else for him has been really, really, really good. And I think that's worth noting and pointing out. We're going to talk a little bit about that desire to get to the paint, why the Magic have to win the paint to win the game. We'll reset that reminder and those statistics coming up here in just a moment. But first, it's time for a quick word from our friends over at eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive 
eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors, you cover. With more than 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit is only available to U.S. customers. We want to thank you for making Locked On Magic part of your day. Every day, as you can tell, I am on the road, uh, so I'll be working from, from my hotel room. I have my TV on here, and you know, obviously my options are very limited when I'm on the road, and that makes me very disappointed because if I want sports news when I'm in the hotel room, unfortunately, I'm stuck with the shouters. We don't like the shouting. Keep it keep it calm. I don't need to bring my – I don't need to get my blood pressure up. I don't need to get antsy about anything. I just want the best analysis from people who know what they're talking about from the sports world. And that's what Locked On Sports Today is. Make the switch to Locked On Sports Today. It's a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest sports stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. That's part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So, you know, obviously Franz Wagner has been really good at one thing. And I didn't mention this before. He's taken only 44 mid-range jumpers. I think a lot of us, you know, we're always thinking about ways that these young players continue to improve and continue to become stars. And, you know, I, I, I agree with this and I believe this too. Franz Wagner as a potential star player has earned the right to take mid-range jumpers. Mid-range jumpers are the provenance of the stars. You need to be super efficient to make those work. Um, especially with the magic, they're not taking enough threes for three pointers not to be worth it for them. Um, He's earned the right to shoot more mid-range jumpers. And, and, you know, look, he's got to work on his three-point shot. But obviously the thing that Franz Wagner has done really well is, is his ability to get downhill. His ability to get in the paint, ability to finish at the basket. That is what Franz Wagner has been about all year long. That's what he has been most successful at all year long. And that is a great analysis or an, an analogy for the team as a whole. Um, I know I've mentioned this a few times throughout the course of the season. I feel like it's worth resetting because as we get closer to the playoffs, as we get closer to these games where, you know, every little thing's going to matter. It's, it's not about adjustments or changing things drastically. You can't change who you are drastically at this point of the season. This time of the season is about doubling down on who you are. It's about fully embracing what your identity is because hey, they're going to try and take that away from you. And if they, if your opponent in a playoff series takes that away from you, you're losing the series, plain and simple. This is about being who you are more. And look, who are the Magic? What is the Magic's offensive philosophy? It's get downhill, get to the paint, force action at the rim, get to the foul line. They make up for their three-point shooting with points in the paint, with offensive rebounds, with free throws. That's how they make up not making enough threes. And look, Orlando's been making more threes since the All-Star break. They've been a little bit better on that, that category. But, you know, you don't have to go very far to understand that when the Magic don't attack the paint, when they don't win the paint, they really, really struggle. To me, that was the difficulty of Monday's game against the Blazers. Um, you know, the defense was okay. You know, I, 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 statistically it was fine. I, I think there are issues with it. Um, statistically the defense was okay, but where the magic fell short is Portland was able to keep Orlando from the paint in the game. Portland won the paint 50 to 44. They obviously gave up 23 second chance points off 11 offensive rebounds. 
these are all just signs to me that Portland outworked Orlando, that Orlando fell into the traps Portland laid for them, or, or Portland forced Orlando to take the shots they wanted them to take. When the Magic made their threes, and look, they made a ton of threes against Memphis. They got away with it against Memphis too. So I'm not going to sit here and say say that that you know this is just a one game thing. It's now been a two game thing, really a three game thing. I think Golden State won the paint as well. Um, Portland essentially said, "Okay, you made a bunch of threes. You went up 15. We believe you're going to miss threes." open and they missed a bunch of threes in the first half. They made all but like two or three threes in the second half. And that's what it comes down to this. That's what it is in this And those were the shots the Magic wanted to give up. But that doesn't excuse why they still scored 50 points in the paint. The numbers do not lie. Orlando is 10th in the league with 51.7 points in the paint this season. Um, but the Magic have not hit that mark in the last four games. They have not hit 52 points in the paint in the last four games. They lost two of those three games in the road to hot shooting to beat the Grizzlies. The Magic's 44 points in the paint in Monday's win were the 17th fewest this season. When the Magic scored fewer than 50 points in the paint in a game, they are 10 and 18. 10 and 18. Here's some more numbers for you. I'm just going to throw numbers that you see what sticks. Orlando is second in the league with 29.8 field goal attempts per game in the restricted area, and they shoot 67.3% in those shots. In Monday's game, Orlando was just 9 for 11. 9 for 11. They took 9 for 11 in the paint. Um, That's pretty clear that the Magic are not getting downhill. That's pretty clear that the Magic were not getting to the basket. Now, granted, some of these stats get skewed here. Magic shot 27 free throws, so field goal attempts don't tell the whole story. But they do tell part of it. They do tell part of it. Furthermore, Paolo Bancaro was 2 for 7 on three-pointers. Um, 2 for 7. He was 3 for 5 in the restricted area. Average is about 5.2 field goal attempts per game in the restricted area, so that wasn't crazy. But he was 2 for 7 on threes. The Magic are 7 and 13 in games where Bancaro shoots more than five three-pointers. Again, just more hints. I mentioned Paolo Bancaro leads the team in drives per game, according to Second Spectrum. Just more hints that the Magic are not getting downhill, are not getting to the basket. Now, Wednesday night here in New Orleans, they're going to be playing the New Orleans Pelicans. The Pelicans are one of the best teams at defending the paint. But remember last Thursday, Orlando crushed New Orleans in the paint. Orlando won that game in the paint, getting downhill, pulling Jonas Valanciunas, pulling Zion Williamson away from the basket. And, and getting to that, getting into the lane and making things happen. That's how the Magic win games. That's why I'm not so concerned about Franz Wagner not shooting the ball well from three because his value is infinitely more as an attacker, as someone who can get downhill to the lane, to the basket, and score in these high percentage areas. This is who the Magic are. And as we... And, it's the, the if there is a concern, if there is something to be worried about at this point, it's that the magic are not getting these high quality shots. If there is a concern at this point, it's that the magic are not playing their identity. And their identity is to get downhill and get to the paint. The more the magic get to the paint, the better chance they have to win. As we get closer to the playoffs, that's who the Magic have to be. That's what is going to determine their playoff success because if they abandon the paint, if teams force them to become a three-point shooting team, they're going to lose their series. They might steal a game. I, I, like Gary Clark made four threes and the Magic stole a game from Bucks in 2020. That happens. But to do something four times, four out of seven times, that's about consistency. That's about your identity. And this Magic team's identity is about scoring in the paint. And so that's why I tell everyone, the first stat I look at on the Magic's box score is points in the paint. If they have 55 points in the paint, I'm very confident they won that game. 
I think they've got two, maybe three losses when they score 55 points in the Painter Bowl. Um, I'm very confident they won those games. If they're under 50, I'm very confident they lost that game. And again, happened in, happened against Memphis, so it, it's not you know not it, it's not sufficient, but it, it it is a strong indicator of what the Magic are doing. Tuesday in the NBA was a big day for standings watch, so we'll do some standings watch as Joel Embiid returns. We'll ask whether that matters for the Orlando Magic. We'll get to that coming up here in just a moment. The beignets are getting to me. But first, it's time for a quick word from our friends over at Amazon Fire TV. You know, I, I, I'm on the road right now, uh, and, you know, my TV options are obviously very, very limited. But if I had a Fire TV stick, I'd be able to bring my TV with me and get all the sports, all the analysis that I want on the road. So Fire TV, you know, bring us, bring us some love here. Fire TV is your destination for sports. From live games to highlights to in-depth analysis, Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes as well as free live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences too. Fire TV channels lets you dive into all of the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on all the latest in the world of sports. March Madness, NBA, MLB, WNBA coming up, and a whole lot more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos too. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should trust me on this. To learn more, visit www.amazon.com slash locked on fire TV. Tuesday ended up being a big day for standings watch for the Orlando Magic. So I want to go over um, some of the results that we saw, the impact that they have on the Magic. Because obviously now the Magic are in... You know, we're in the dead sprint to the finish here. This is this is the end run. This is the end of the road. Five of the next seven games on the road. We've been previewing this. We've been talking about this. I've been saying this. Let's get to the end of the homestand. Let's see where we're at, and we'll see what the Magic ultimately are able to do. Um, I think two things here first before we dive into anyone else and anything else going on. Um, first, everything starts with the Magic. If the Magic take care of their business, they're going to be where they are. Like, again, just the Magic control their own destiny here. I know I've said this a few times as we've talked about the standings, um, but the magic control what happens to them. Ultimately, they're not reliant on anyone doing anything. You know, yes, they, they need the Knicks and Cavs to lose some games if they want to be the three seed, but the magic aren't reliant on them. Like their place is secure if they take care of their business. And that's really the big thing. Now, obviously they got a tough road at New Orleans, at Charlotte, Chicago, uh, at Houston, at Milwaukee on a back-to-back at Philadelphia versus Milwaukee. Um, I think I got everyone there. Did I? Yeah, I think so. Um, Seven games left. Seven games sprint to the finish, five of them on the road. So a very, very, uh, very, very difficult path ahead. But, you know, again, I I know I've said this all week. The Magic should feel like they can win every game on their schedule. The Pelicans are still without Brandon Ingram. They're struggling a little bit right now, coming off the loss of the Phoenix Suns on, on Monday. Um, they should feel, you know, fairly confident that they could beat this New Orleans team. They trashed them without without any last time out. Um, you know, even Milwaukee, uh, that game at Milwaukee is whatever, but even Milwaukee, like Milwaukee's been up and down all year. They played Milwaukee tough. They have the size to match up with them. Um, their defense is the second best defense in the league. That should give them a chance to win every game they play. And right now, Orlando has to find their offense. It's been missing for the last couple of games. Um, that's going to be the big challenge, especially now that they're on the road. But again, the, not that the Magic will be favored in every game, but the Magic should feel like they can win any game that they play. They should feel co- confident they can beat anybody that they play. As we sit here tonight, the Orlando Magic have now tied the New York Knicks thanks to the Knicks losing to the Miami Heat. They're at 44-31. and 31. They're a game back of Cleveland uh, for third. Cleveland is 45-30, and 30, so full game back there. Um, Cleveland is currently on the road. They're on a West Coast trip because the NCAA women's basketball tournament is at their their stadium at Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse. Um, so again, some opportunity there if the Magic can pick up some wins. 
They are a game and a half ahead of the Indiana Pacers for sixth, and now two games back of the Miami Heat for seventh. Um, the big results, of course, coming in on Tuesday, we had the uh, let me just double check my we had the uh, Philadelphia 76ers defeating the Oklahoma City Thunder and Joel Embiid's return. We'll talk about Embiid here in a minute. They had the Miami Heat defeating the New York Knicks 109 to 99. And then uh, the Cleveland Cavaliers defeating the Utah Jazz 129 to 113 to maintain that lead over the four spot. But again, remember, a few things are important here. Orlando owns the tiebreaker with New York. So now that the Magic and Knicks are tied with the same record, neither team has any games in hand, the Magic win against New Orleans, they control the four seed. Um, you know, as long as they're tied, Orlando wins. And remember the important thing, if there's a three-way tie, if it's Cleveland, Orlando, New York tied for third, the Orlando Magic as Southeast Division champions win that tiebreaker. Conference record doesn't matter. Um, Orlando is 30 and 17 in the conference. Cleveland's 30 and 20. New York's 30 and 16. So that's super tight anyway. That tiebreaker is irrelevant for the Magic because if the Magic tie Cleveland and New York, they win that tiebreaker as Southeast Division champions. Obviously, I didn't get down to the Philadelphia 76ers sitting in eighth place. Um, they're 41 and 35. They get Joel Embiid back tonight uh, on Tuesday night. He scores 24 points in limited minutes. The, the Sixers come back and beat the Thunder. And, and there's going to be a little bit of an adjustment period, but you have to remember, though, Philadelphia was one of the best teams in the league when Embiid was healthy. Before Embiid went out, they were one of the best teams legally statistically, and they were high up in the standings, and, and they've dropped like a rock because losing Embiid is that big of a deal. Now, Embiid isn't full force Embiid yet, but he looked pretty good from the little bit I saw before before I, 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 went, I went out tonight. Um, you know, he's going to get back into shape, and by the time the Magic see him next Friday, he's going to have plenty of games under his belt. That game against Philadelphia, you know, thankfully it doesn't seem like it's going to mean a whole lot, but – I mean a whole lot for the head to head between Orlando and Philadelphia, but that's now a, a much tougher game than maybe it would have been a week ago, two weeks ago. And granted Orlando struggled with Philadelphia both times that they faced him this year. I want to put some perspective though. Um, you know, does Embiid's return actually matter? It does because he makes the Sixers immeasurably better, but look, the magic number for Orlando to avoid the eight seed is, is now, um, is uh, 47 is four. Um, so the Magic need four more wins or four more Sixers losses to avoid the eight seed. So they're not out of the running yet. But but this is kind of, you know, as much as I, I think Magic numbers are really helpful because it just gives you that countdown. You can kind of see how close you're getting. But let's, let's put it into this perspective. The Magic have seven games left. Let's say they go three and four. They end up with 47 wins. In order for the Sixers to catch the Magic, if they go 500 and three and four, to get to 47 wins, the Sixers have to go six and one. Six and one. Not even. Uh, hold on. Uh sorry, they got six games up. They got to go six and oh. If I'm if I'm count cal calculating correct. If the if the magic go three and four. So Philadelphia is not really a threat unless again if the magic got to take care of their business. I think 500 is the bare minimum to ask for for the rest of the season. Uh, you know, I, I expect them to go five and three, their final eight. They won the Portland game. So I expect them to go four and three over these final seven. I, I really do. Um, I think the Magic will get to 48 wins. Uh, and that should put them in a really strong spot to be the four seed, to be the five seed. The five seed is going to be four. Five, the four seed is going to be 48, 49 wins. That, you know, let's Elam ending this. The Magic's goal should be 49 wins. If they can get to 49 wins, they, they will be they will be hosting game one. That that I am that I am sure. Um, but, you know, we don't know. Let's put more perspective on this. Miami beating New York. Miami's got, this, I think, the second best defense in the league since the All-Star break behind Orlando. Um, that's a team I think a lot of us don't want to their experience and their intensity bug the magic a little bit. Um, to get to 47 wins for them, they'd have to go 5-2. and two. And again, remember, they tie Orlando. If they tie Orlando, they pass them. 5-2. Um, over their last seven games, um, if they want to get to 47 wins. Again, it, that's assuming the Magic go 500. The Pacers sitting in six, two game, uh, game and a half back. They're 43 and 33. They need to go four and two. They, they got, they've played 76 games. They need to go four and two to hit that 47 wins. 
So I would say this, if the Magic go 500 the rest of the way, you know, three and four, four and three, whatever, whatever it ends up being. If the Magic go 500 the rest of the way, they're going to be the five seed. If they're able to go five and two the rest of the way, they will be the four seed, potentially the three seed. If they go six and one, they will be the three seed. So is Joel Embiid a threat to the Orlando Magic? Yes, because the Magic will have to face him and he will be up and running and a fully operational battle station by the time we get to him next week. But the Sixers ain't catching the Magic. The Heat are going to have to really rally to catch the Magic. Even the Pacers are going to have to have a really strong showing to catch the Magic at this point. But it all comes back to the one thing that matters. As much as you want to talk about other teams and think about the standings and look at them, only one thing matters. The Magic have to take care of their own business. And if they take care of their own business, the standings will take care of them. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked on Magic. Of course, find me on Twitter at philiprr underscore omd. Subscribe to the podcast and Apple Podcasts. Search your tune in him like Google Play, Spotify, Odyssey, and all phone based on podcasts to your podcast enable listening device. Really, some of the Orlando Magic. Be sure to check out orlandomagicdaily.com. You can follow us on Twitter at Oh, Magic Daily. Also, be sure to check out my Patreon page, the Orlando Magic Hub. You can check that out at patreon.com slash Orlando Magic Hub. I've been using that to help fund some trips, be able to cover games on the road. Our good friend Jason Beattie of the Orlando Sentinel is not on this trip, so I am the Orlando representative uh, for this road for this road trip. Um, so, you know, we're getting, we're getting to the end of the season. We want some independent reporting. Your support enables me to do this kind of independent reporting and be out on the road to uh, cover this team and, and watch the, watch these games and give you the on the ground analysis that I know you all want. So I thank you all for your support. And again, be sure to check it out. Patreon.com slash Orlando magic hub. Now that you're done listening to us, be sure to check out locked on sports today, the 24 seven on YouTube and now available on Amazon fire TV and the free fire TV channels app locked on sports today. Is here for you 24 seven covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of locked on plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. That's going to do it for me today, though. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked On Magic. For Orlando Magic Daily and Locked On Magic, this has been Philip Rosman-Mike. We'll see you all again next time for another episode of Locked On Magic.